Hello and welcome to this Laura Nibble Quick Start Guide. This little device is perfect for communicating with friends off the grid, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to assemble the hardware and set up your radio for use as a mesh-tastic node with your phone or as a standalone LoRa station. For this project, you will need the following tools. A soldering iron, solder, a pair of small pliers, and a laptop to install mesh-tastic with. While we wait for the soldering iron to heat up, let's quickly go over all the components that come in the box. At the heart of the nibble is our custom-made PCB designed with a tiny footprint in mind. This board can easily fit into a pocket or backpack and can even be mounted inside a 1-inch PVC pipe to make your own DIY weatherproof LoRa station. Next up is the microcontroller, and if this is your first time working with LoRa radios, we recommend using the ESP32 S30 for its Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities which allows you to wirelessly interface the device with your phone. On the other hand, if you're looking for a minimal, low-power build for use in solar or battery-powered installations, you should opt for the RP2040 due to its ability to last longer and operate under lower voltages. Just keep in mind you'll have to connect over serial via USB-C cable in order to interface with it. Either way, the nibble board only supports one microcontroller at a time, so choose wisely. For the actual LoRa transmitter, the nibble is designed to work with the RFM95 chip, and depending on your location, you'll either need the 868 MHz version for the EU or the 915 MHz version for use here in the United States. Quick disclaimer. Please confirm you are using the correct radio frequency for your area, because while you don't need a radio license to work with LoRa, using the incorrect transmitter for your region could be illegal. And speaking of radios, you'll have a couple of options for antennas, since we include a built-in spring antenna, or you can use the UFL connector with your own external antenna. For best results, however, we recommend not using both at the same time. Regardless of which you choose, always make sure an antenna is connected before broadcasting, Otherwise, you could permanently damage the radio. With all our parts laid out, we can now start assembly. And the first thing you will be soldering on are the three resistors. From left to right, it will be the 330 ohm resistor, followed by the two 10K resistors labeled 1002, and a small indicator light for the top. For these small surface mount components, I recommend applying a bit of solder to the first pad, and while the solder is still hot, using your small pliers to gently move the resistor into place before soldering the other side. Once that's done, you can flip over the board and solder the LoRa transmitter in place. Be sure to match up the orientation with the outline on the silkscreen, though. Following that is the antenna, as well as the UFL connector if you want to use an external antenna. Just make sure you align the smaller of the two middle contacts with the pad on the PCB. Last but not least is the status LED, where you'll be aligning the negative lead with the square pad on the PCB. And with that, your nibble should be fully assembled. But before we can get started messaging anyone, we first have to flash our microcontroller with the correct firmware. To do that, navigate to the Redia GitHub and download the nibble firmware zip file. We'll put a link to this page down in the description. Go ahead and unzip the file, and if you're using the ESP32 version, navigate to nugget.dev, which is our web-based firmware flasher. Now hold down the B button while plugging in the board, and then click Connect Your Nugget. Select your nibble from the drop-down list, and then click Upload Custom Binary before selecting the firmware nibble ESP32 S3 master bin file from the folder you just unzipped. Once the file has finished uploading, unplug and then replug your nibble back in to start using the new firmware. For the RP2040 based nibbles, hold down the boot button while plugging in your nibble, and once it connects as a USB drive, simply drag and drop the firmware.uf2 file onto the device where it will automatically install and reboot itself. Now that your nibble is ready to go, we can set up our LoRa radio within MeshTastic. For this, you can either connect via serial with a USB-C cable, or if you have the ESP32 version, you can also connect with Bluetooth and use your phone. If you are using Bluetooth, the default pairing pin is 123456, but you can change this later if you wish. Once connected, the first thing you need to do is set your region, and like we mentioned earlier, this will be dependent on the LoRa radio transmitter you have installed. In this case, I'll be setting it to US. The rest of the settings you'll want to leave as their default before hitting save and letting the device reboot. Once it's back online, you can now add a short and long name to your nibble to make it easier to find, as well as joining any private channels your friends might be on so you can securely communicate. 
You can even generate QR codes to make it even easier for others to join your private channel. Now that your Nibble is fully set up and ready to go, the sky is the limit when it comes to how you can start using Meshtastic. And because Mesh networks only get stronger the more nodes you have, that means it's perfect for things like natural disaster recovery, music festivals, or protests where other methods of communication might have gone down or been compromised. Plus, you can securely forward your phone's GPS location using the Meshtastic app in the event someone gets lost. Of course, Meshtastic can also do more than just text communication, and for those looking to track sensor data, the Nibble supports I2C sensors such as temperature and humidity, which can all be configured in the telemetry settings. And for the ESP32 versions, you can even track passing Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices with the PAX counter function. With the tiny size and low power requirements of the Nibble, you can easily make a network of solar-powered nodes to report back data over extremely long distances. For the more advanced users out there, you can even write and compile your own firmware in either Arduino or CircuitPython to directly interface with the LoRa radio. This is perfect for controlling devices at super long ranges, and over on the Nullbyte channel, we pushed these radios to their extremes and found they could still communicate at ranges reaching almost a mile, even in a crowded downtown environment. We'll throw a link down below to the software packages you'll need if you want to try these out yourself. So whether you're using it as a way to communicate with friends off the grid, adding it to your existing network of nodes, or making a homebrew wireless controller, we hope you make the most of your new Nibble. Plus, don't forget to check out the Ready at GitHub and Discord to see what other projects are being created by community members, and to share your own. Links to those resources and more down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to Redia for more hacking projects, cybersecurity news, and more.